So super fun conversation with Mike. Uh, SacredRides.com built a new software platform called Getaways. And really we just kind of unpack kind of the business model, how they got to where they've been. They've had a business they've been doing for a dozen years, extremely successful in their space, built some product, built some education support software, building an affiliate model, not a franchise, to really take this to the next level and scale it up. And we talked about how do you scale up uh, customer acquisition, essentially um, driving demand for an affiliate for a company that you're supporting. We also talk about how do you activate and retain those customers as primarily focus in the first 100 days, a little shout out to my friend Joey Coleman. And then uh, we wrap it up by talking about um, the financial model itself and how do you create economic value for a client that's paying you on a monthly basis with a reoccurring annual revenue model so that they feel super compelled, excited to promote you and drive a lot of demand for this new platform that you're building. I think you're gonna love it. Mike is an incredible dude, super kind, open with his, uh, his feedback or open with his business and uh, just really receptive to the advice. What are we talking about today? So we, we talked about it uh, briefly before, but this like little side startup I've got. On yeah, the, on my I keep business. seeing the side hustle on the Facebook comments mention. Well, I've got, I've got a few side hustles and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to actually get rid of the main hustle so I can focus on the side hustles. Yeah. So, uh, so the main company is this travel company. We do mountain bike trips all over the world. And it's like a big business, like you guys. It's a pretty big business. Like yeah, it's, it's not like you running no, I, I'm, I'm not even. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I'm you have you have guides all over the world that are yeah. running Michael, m mountain biking trips right. for people. Right. Awesome. And so we've got this we've got this side thing, which is basically kind of like a, a bit of a SaaS model, a kind of a yeah. platform. So we we've spent the last three years building out our tech. And what's that called? It's called it's called Getaways. The Sacred okay. Rides Getaways model. Okay. So Sacred Rides is the mountain the biking company. travel company, and, and Getaways then Getaways is, is the, the platform. Is the platform model. Cool. And uh, so the idea is we took all our tech infrastructure, our website, our booking system, our operations system, our, you know, all the stuff that powers what we do, and we packaged it up with training manuals, marketing materials, all that kind of stuff. So it's a little bit of a platform, it's a little bit of a franchise yeah. kind of thing, but we're staying totally away from the word franchise, because you probably know that. You just said it, man. Yeah, yeah. I can't unhear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> delete, delete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop, stop, <laughs> it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm staying away from the word franchise. I was like, but you just said it. Yeah, yeah. No. Okay. It's, so anyways, that, that wording is nowhere in anything. What we do, we're, we're calling it an affiliate model. So yeah. you basically sign up and we've been playing around with pricing. You get, you get access to this platform. You can post your trips. We, we limit it to one or two day trips because you yeah. can't break shit too much. Yeah. With, uh, with that and it's in your local area. So, so essentially if I have a tour, com is it a tour, any tour company can use this? Well, just a tour biking? company could use it, but it's mainly just like, you know, you're, you're, you're a guy who lives in Moab yeah. and you've been mountain biking there your whole and life. And I want to run my own tours. And, run, and you get to run it under the Sacred Rides brand. Okay, so I actually, and that's why it's an affiliate because essentially I'm using your brand. That comes with a certain level of uh, awareness in the marketplace, right? And you also provide me the infrastructure from a technology point of view. Yep. Do you provide any training on running the business or expectations for level of quality or service? Yeah, yes, and yes. So the training part is we built out a, a big support center. Yep. Everything from you know how to operate your trips. We have an online training program. It's seven modules. You take it at your own pace, uh, and then you know how to operate great trips, how to market yourself, how to sell, you know all that kind of stuff. So. Yep. It's pretty, and then we've automated the, the crap out of it. You basically sign up, you get an email a week for 10 weeks that walks you through the whole thing. The support center's all there. Uh, everything's there. And then it's, and so that's the basic level of training. Yeah. And then the expectation is, this is, we're, we've yet to roll this part out, but we're sort of following the CrossFit model a little bit. Yeah. You know how they have their, their training. Big the, fan. The, le, the level one, level two. I usually training. can't go a day without mentioning CrossFit or trying to recruit somebody. Uh, awesome, awesome model. Yeah. So, uh, so basically the idea is you sign up and all the training's there, but within a year you've got to attend one of these in-person trainings. Cool. That's just to maintain the certification or just yeah, to get so, it. Well, that's initially. sort of the next level because okay. all the, tra I mean, really, you know, it's not rocket science. Yeah. Taking, taking somebody on your local trails for yeah. a day, yeah. you got to, you got to have your first aid, you got to yeah. have permits, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Uh, but there's nuances. I mean, the, you can, you know, if you know your local trails, you can take people out, you can give them a, a great experience, but if you want to you know, really run yeah. a great business yeah. and you want to operate. It's like a level two kind of thing. Yeah, so it's kind of like we, we, want, it, we want people to be there in person. Yeah. It's a three-day training. It's 
it's guiding, it's how to run so a I business. Guess, it's and we're going to get there, Mike, but just help, just because I always, it helps me to understand where we're going to end up. Where, what, what is the area of the business that you'd like feedback on? So the, the, well, the three, the, the three are one customer acquisition. Yeah. Uh, second one is activation. So, yeah. so what we're experiencing Speak is- Speak my language, man. <laughs> we, ha we have a handful of people who are like really active and kicking butt and then yeah. a big chunk of people who yeah. are just not doing yeah. much. And we have some people who are not doing anything. Perfect. They paid us a whole pile yeah. of money. And then the third one is just around pricing. Sweet spot. Either, yeah. either just like, absolutely, like, are we missing the mark with our pricing, or maybe there's a different pricing model or something like that. Cool. So, uh, talk to me about where you guys are at today. Like, how many people have uh, bought into this program? What are some of the current numbers in regards to people that are active? Like, what are we working with? So, we, when we launched out of the gate, this was about a year ago, maybe 13 months ago. Uh, we set it at a Probably a pricing mistake, too high of a price point, thirty yeah. five hundred bucks a year, yeah. or uh, or three fifty a month, and um, we knocked it. And then we had a we had a discount, and we knocked it down to twenty five hundred. We got about twenty people on board with that. Okay, cool. And then we closed it off. That's pretty great. I mean, twenty people, twenty five hundred. I thought that was pretty good market yeah. validation. Yeah. And we got we had about twenty people on board. What was the pitch though? This is interesting. What was the what did you sell them? Was it like a business in a box? Essentially, right. And so okay. I mean. That was the practical part of it. What we were trying to sell was a dream, right? Yeah. Like this is, uh, and you know, our, our, our and what it, I guess that, so that's this is good. So that's what you sold, and if you fast forward five years, what do you want to be selling? So, do you want to be selling the software? Do you want to be selling the whole affiliate model? Well, the software really is the affiliate model. I mean, it's we part of we it. We provide yeah. some support along the way, but. Uh, we're trying, we're trying to, and you know, everything we've learned from 20 years in the business is in that support center yeah. and in the emails yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But we're trying to, like the Facebook group is where the affiliates are helping each other out. Yeah. And we're trying to, because they're, they're learning more on the ground about, you know, yeah. we know what a customer looks like for our, you know, 10 day, $5,000 trips. Yeah. That's different than a mom and pa and their two kids yeah. going on a one day a trip. A couple hundred bucks, like yeah. So where, where we'd like to And that's up, really the split in Getaway versus Sacred Rides. Sacred it, Rides is, is a multi-thousand dollar yeah, investment. Yeah, it's kind of like trip is 4,000 bucks. Yeah, it's like right. the thing they do once a year with right. their friends kind of thing. And, and what you're talking about is local providers providing like a Toronto tour or a New York tour or probably not, like more in the mountains. Yeah. 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 Um, and so like the average price point for those kind of customer transactions would be what? It'd be... Well, for a one-day trip, it's about 125, 150, depending on where you are. Got so it. obviously, you know, a guy in Switzerland so they sell or a guy in a lot of that. is going to be charging a lot more than somebody in Guatemala. Yeah. Uh, and then the two-day packages. So we're encouraging people to put together two-day packages mm. because then you can package in lodging, meals, all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, it's called like bundling. We, it's a great. It's when a great, yeah. when we were selling, we don't sell weekends anymore, but we were selling them for anywhere from six hundred to nine dollars. For sure. Right. And yeah. So you get, you get. Five, you get five people on a weekend, and boom, yeah, you, know, you make pretty business. good money up there. So where we'd like to get to is eventually, you know, if we can get up to, uh, and and so it's a recurring revenue model, re yeah. recurring revenue model. So uh, they sign an agreement for five years. Mm -hmm. They have the option to back out every year on their anniversary, yeah. on their one-year anniversary. Yeah. Uh, but you know, if we can if we can do a good job and keep people around for five years, and then they renew or whatever, it's uh, it's good money. So if we could get up to you know 500 affiliates around the world. We can we can have pretty good coverage around the globe. Not only does that generate a lot of revenue, but then if we're doing a good job of that, those people are then hopefully coming back for the longer trips, the four thousand dollar trips, yeah. right? Because they're in our marketing database, they're having a good experience. But then also, any they basically get their own website, you know, moab.sacredrides.com, yeah. something like that. Any trips they put up on that site show up on getaways.sacredrides. Yeah. And there's a web, there's a, a map of the world kind of Airbnb. Yeah. You can browse the different criteria, stuff like that. So the, the, the issue we're having is that we want to try and drive traffic to that main website and bring them leads and customers, but yeah. we don't have, you know, classic platform kind of yeah. chicken and egg kind yeah, of Yeah, because it's so kind of a marketplace. Yeah, it's, yeah. A bit of a, it's a bit of a marketplace. What's the challenge? Is it that when you get them a lead, they don't follow up the way they're supposed to, so they're not closing to be able to justify the ROI on the cost? Well, we, we're... A little bit. I mean, more. Or is their we're page having trouble not converting. Just, we're we're just having trouble getting them leads because we've only got about 40 affiliates so far. Yeah. And so if you look at that world map, 
we've got a bunch of people in North America, and yeah. then the rest of the world, you know, we've got about 15 scattered around the world, yeah. but it's kind of sparse. Right? But are you so running geo-targeted ads? We are. Okay. Yeah, yeah we're, running, we're running ads that's it, but what we found is we're just not getting conversion. Were you ever running paid ads for your primary sacred rides? Uh, yeah, we're still doing that. Is that profitable? Like the, our, the return on ad spend? We're still trying to figure that out. See, I mean, well, that, I mean, obviously that'd be the, so it's kind of like when you, and, and we'll, so you want to talk about acquisition, retention, and then just pricing model and structure. So like when I think of acquisition um, in any business, the key is to figure out who's the, and I always look at it at two kind of like levels, highest value, highest, like um, easiest to work with, fastest to sell, highest value. Right, and this is true for all SaaS businesses. If they, you know, they they come to me and they're like, okay, I want to, you know, fix my model. I say, okay, you got a thousand customers. You know, let's draw kind of a grid and say, okay, well, who who are the customers that generate the most lifetime value and are the easiest to close? And truthfully, if we're going to build a business, let's focus on that customer. And then what we want to do is, once we have that, then we want to figure out what's the what's the core value or the package or the solution or the service or the the plan that that type of customer buys and front load that in, in the sales and marketing activities. So and it sounds like you really understand the kind of three, four, five thousand dollar customer and it's better, it's easier to get an ROAS, a return on ad spend on that customer because you can spend more, yeah. right? And you have more gross margin to play with. It's a lot tougher the smaller you go. That's why there's certain e-commerce yeah, products. So, so the other thing is like we, any bookings that come through their own site, we'd get 10% of that. Yeah. If, the, if, if they come through our site, that, that map of the world kind of thing, we get 15%, which buys us a little bit more margin to spend money to bring them leads. But we're just, we're not seeing the return. It's, I still can't see on a two, like what's the average purchase price? So you're doing the transaction well, through you, your website? You, yeah, so if you average out like the one day trips and the two day trips, the average spend is about $250, right? Okay. So you multiply that by 15%, you've got 37.50, yeah. like that. So it's, it's you know, in and terms that's of just and that's, that's just for you to liquidate the lead and not make any gross margin on that, meaning that you've got to build out a marketing and ads team just to return. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, we don't necessarily have to make money on that. Because, because your bet is we're on making, the back we're end. Making, we're making money on the annual uh, subscription from the affiliate. Got it. Right? I mean, that's that's pure margin. Like the, yeah. te the tech is all built out. Yeah. We need to provide very little support. It's like you know, the yeah. margins are sky high. We need we need to be able to. Uh, drive enough leads and customers to the affiliate so that they stick around. We're not, we don't have high churn. Got it. And uh, and then if they're sticking around and they're happy, then it's easier to bring on new affiliates. So, it's interesting because there's a few ways to dissect it. One of the ways I look at marketplaces is um, either I set the price or you set the price. Okay, and I call that the kind of the marketplace 3.0 versus 2.0. 2.0. 1.0 was let's build a directory. It's a bazaar. Right, this is right. Craigslist and really Kijiji. Then there was like 2.0 which said, let's take a piece off of that marketplace and build some kind of construct around it to create consistency and liquidity for that transaction. Then we're talking Thumbtack for services, we're talking Airbnb for accommodation. Um, there's a ton of them that you can yeah. look at, like job, you know, job sites, et cetera. And then 3.0 is really this new generation of saying, well, we don't want to have to own or have any of the supply side we want a marketplace in the sense that we want to own demand, but then we need to set the price so that we can set liquidity and be able to reinvest in the business. And I feel like your, the, the model you're using is really tough because typically in a 2.0, the only way it works is if the supply side actually drives demand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah totally. So, so how does that happen? Well, SEO, so meaning that you create profiles and those profiles rank. So the more supply that you have in a city when somebody searches city mountain biking, you know, Toronto mountain biking rides, you guys are organically gonna rank, especially if you have dozens of providers in that city. Um, so that's one. Uh, two is uh, if the supply side can produce content, this is what we did at Clarity. So the experts at Clarity produce content for our blog. So we actually- that's, that's what we're trying to do. Yep, so that's yeah, so a big part. So we're encouraging, but you know, some, but people, some people are awesome at it and some people just aren't, aren't doing and anything. And that's part of the editorial process. Yeah. Um, and I will say, true for us too, there are some experts that actually, actually were really capable communicators and right, other right. ones that probably shouldn't even be on Clarity and it was actually a really good test for us. Um, so, so supply, dry, supply driven demand and then the other one is just sharing profiles and ideally, and this is where it's interesting with fr franchise models and affiliate models is they'll give you the instructions to run. Like I can't imagine the amount of people that waste marketing dollars sending people to their Facebook page. 
yeah, that yeah. essentially allows Facebook to grow its argument that every business should have a Facebook page because the Facebook business or the business runs ads to their Facebook page right. that aren't that aren't measured, aren't trackable, and we're talking like hundreds of dollars a month times millions of businesses that just blindly right. run. So, but as a business, like I get why Facebook would do that and why they throw around $50 credits all the time because that's their activation and get them on the, yeah. and they don't really know if it's working or not. They see their likes going up, so they don't stop because there's this fear if I stop, it stops. I can't really attribute what business I'm getting from Facebook, but I know that right, right. if I don't do it, my so like, so that, that's another thing that needs to be considered. At the end of the day, like I look at every business through an economic model that the investment on ad spend needs to provide some kind of ROI. And I know that you sold that. It sounds like that's kind of like, is it something that you committed to generating X amount of leads per month or just something that you'd love to provide as a value? So we, we, we've committed nothing. We've been very upfront from the get-go and we said, hey, listen, we're providing you with a platform we're giving you all the tools, the training you need to be able to run your own guiding business, mountain bike guiding business mm -hmm. in your local area. We're going to try and send you leads, but don't expect anything from us. You got to get out there. You got to hustle. You know, put up some posters, Perfect. develop some relationships with your local tourism board, whatever. Yeah. You got to get out there, hustle. You can't sit back. And the other thing is, like, this is a bit different than Airbnb because they get exclusive access to an area. Oh, okay, so they're buying a territory or a region. They're, they're, they're buying a territory. Got it. And uh, like, there's just there. We thought about doing an open model, and there's actually an app called MTB Guru that's kind of yeah. doing that. Yeah. But realistically, there isn't room for like ten different people in Whistler. Yeah. To be, even Whistler, a popular yeah. place like that, to yeah. be making a living, there's not enough demand. Yeah. And uh, and and you know what I think is maybe the strength of this is they get their own website. Yeah unlike just a listing, right? Like we have an Airbnb listing. I don't go putting up posters yeah. with our Airbnb URL on yeah. them, right? But yeah, and Airbnb at scale now has built enough of their, their marketing engine to drive demand. Totally. They've built the brand in the market. People default go into Airbnb. I'm saying Airbnb tonight, yeah. like that's, that, but it took six years like to and get to that level. Ton of funding, but I mean, a lot of it was just creative marketing, right? And the, 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 it's been written about, because um, I, I remember meeting Joe and Brian in the early days, thought it was the craziest idea in the world. I thought the government should round up all their customers because any, yeah. this is back in the day when it was like a stranger in your house, like you were staying there. Yeah, yeah. Right, like how many people have stayed in your Airbnb and you guys were in the house? Yeah, Never, none, none exactly, because that's just nuts. <laughs> um, but I guess here's the thing about the model is, uh, if and back to like focusing on one core customer, is I would really focus on building, making it work for one customer, then all customers, yeah. to then find that bright spot to then amplify. And the same would be true for like, how, you know, we talk, let's move on to uh, activation. I always ask people like, tell me about the customers that are rocking right now in your product. And then let's reverse engineer what they, like what happens is there's things that those people experience that maybe somebody else, there's something that's true about them that may not be true for other customers, that if you just made true, would actually work. So I'm a big fan of actually, instead of, so people talk about churn, I'm like, okay, we could focus on the people that didn't stick around or say, who are the ones that are loving the product and say, what's true about their experience when they first signed up? The beauty of software is we can actually deconstruct their click stream and say, here's what their first experience, this is what they all did. Like grab right, right. 10 of them and say like, this is the 80-20 of their, their first experience in the product. And here's on average when they came back. And here's what they did then. And you just kind of deconstruct that and say, okay, that's probably the right experience. We got lucky that those people figured that stuff out. If we front loaded that in the onboarding and front loaded that in our email activation sequence and front loaded that in our customer success team when we reach out to them and talk to them, like, awesome, right? Like yeah, yeah. It's, it's so funny how people want to talk so much about kind of like how do we fix the people that, that left instead of saying, well, why don't we get more, let's just guide everybody through the same process on the front end. So that, I'm a big fan of that in business in general. Yeah. As an entrepreneur, I get a lot of entrepreneurs that are overwhelmed and I say, have you ever felt super productive and not overwhelmed in your business? Yes, tell me about that day. They tell me about their day. I say, how much does your day today look like that day? They go, not at all. Well, why don't we just spend more time making it look like that? It's, it's, once you kind of see the pattern, it's a little easier. So that's on the activation side. And Joey Coleman, I've got to give him credit for the first 100 days. That's my... We're, we're using that in the core business. Perfect. So, you, so, so like, to me, that would be... Um, I've got my own version of that for software, but that would be you know, what he's got training that I think... You know, so you guys already understand it. I think that that's really important. And, uh, and for me, one thing I do that I think is really important is I have this thing called the MAR... Um, uh, monitor, the member at risk monitor. I'm a big fan of instrumenting 
activities that I expect my customers to do. So as they become activated and they may start to decline or may start to um, reduce their activity levels in the software, that I'm aware of it. So, right, so you can you can intervene. I do this on a weekly. I do this in my coaching business. So I have uh, touch points that my uh, team goes through and documents and catalogs and gives a score. And on a weekly basis, I spend an hour reaching out to the people that are on that list that shouldn't be on that list. Awesome. Yeah, like I'm just like I I treat it's fun. I treat my business like a software business because I just think reoccurring models are incredible. And and uh, so it's it's kind of that principle. What's worked. You know, what's worked in the past, just keep doing it. Like, I think sometimes we forget to do the stuff we've done to get success just because we think it's different. It's like, nah, it's not actually that different. We just got to apply it to the current model. Um, so that's on the activation and, and I think re retention. The truth is, though, I think you sold a dream. So you can't be too hard on yourself. Like, we all know this industry of people buying into these, you know, business in the box, these $2,000 programs. Like, arguably, your program is the most valuable thing that they could have bought. You gave them the training, the support, the, the infrastructure, software, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? Like, mm -hmm. they're not getting that from anybody else. But I also think that you shouldn't be accountable to them and their habits. You know what I mean? Like, the unfortunate part is businesses aren't supposed to succeed. Right. Yeah. And I know we wish that like every one of our customers, I want them to be ridiculously sexual, but there, there's obviously a limit to like how much you're going to do to support them and how much they got to show up and do it for themselves. And I love that idea of like CrossFit's kind of, you know, Greg Glassman is, is, is like an uber libertarian and he pretty much says like he doesn't care about territories. He'd rather two CrossFit gyms open up across the street from each other and say fight it push out. Push each other, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and let the ma best man win. And the truth is, is I'm seeing this now because I'm a business partner and an affiliate. And, uh, you know, down the street, maybe a mile and a half away, there's a gym that's half the price and we're, we're crushing, you know, like half the price, but we're crushing. Why? We talked about level of value for a customer, level of service. How do we make this better? How do we create, you know, it's like when, when, you, when you build a better value, like when you create more value for a customer, the right customer is going to find you. So like, I'm a big fan of like, don't price yourself below market just to get customers. Cause again, it's back to like, Same here, totally. yeah. So I think, I think, um, at the end of the day, you're going to get a lot more ROI saying who are the people that are rocking it with our platform, find more people like them, figure out a way that if folks aren't performing on your platform, because, because it is a SaaS model, but it's different because you are giving them territory. Like can you imagine yeah. if every one of my customers that signed up for my productivity software, um, I gave them a, a postal code yeah, yeah, and like, and the challenge is they're, they're occupying a postal code that I can't resell if they're not active, which means I can't get them to upgrade an expansion revenue, which and, makes, and that's, and that's, that's another, a challenge. That's another challenge there, yeah. Sure. So I would definitely figure out in the next wave of uh, customers, a way that says there's, there's a, a minimum level of activity that needs to be present. Otherwise they're out. Yeah. Just even though you don't want to look like a franchise and we won't use that word again, but I, I think if, if that is the model and people essentially are assigned geographical regions. Um, and I, you know what? I think people like this. Like, it's funny how, and man, if I could, I would give away, you know, I create a lot of stuff. And I, if I could, I would give it away to everybody that I think is in need for it. But unfortunately, I've just learned through trial and error and really frustrating banging my head against the wall with like family members and my best friends and like, if they don't pay, they don't pay attention. Exactly. It's, not, it's so exactly. frustrating because you're like, I built this incredible thing and I know it could transform your life. Yet, if you don't make the investment, I know you won't prioritize. And look, I'm no different. There's a reason why I invest tens of thousands of dollars to go to things because it ends up in my calendar. I, I reschedule everything else. You're committed. I don't and the cancel other it. Are committed too, right? Ugh, yeah. it's, just, it's just a different level. So, unfortunately, that I think that there's there's either um, a social commitment, either like a public social, like I'm gonna do this or else all my friends are gonna make fun of me. So like, that's like, I'm gonna mount, climb this mountain, I'm gonna lose 50 pounds or so, kind of like that, that social peer pressure or there's a financial one. And if you, you know, in, in the lieu of getting your customers to do something like that, you know, um, I think it's, it's about an economic one and it's gonna be really important from a business model point of view to ensure that, because if I think of like, what's your dashboard look like? It's a map with the regions that you've mapped out for sale, essentially like a real estate thing. And then it's a performance per real estate. So essentially like, here's a map of the world. We have 25,000 regions that we think are prime for our, our, our program. And it's either red, green, yellow. 
Green means they're rocking at X amount of revenue per year because you guys track it all through your platform. Yellow means that they're on the borderline or they're declining and red means they're just not performing or they haven't been sold. And I would look at this map every day and just try to turn it green. And it's like a simple mission. Like every day I look at the map, how much more of the map is green? And I will just, it. right? It's just, it yeah. just cleans it up, makes it visual and, and simplifies it. Um, does that help? Totally. Yeah. Cool. Anything yeah, yeah. else just to clear up on that or? No, that's good. <laughs> I know it's a lot. It's I just like good. dropped a whole bunch in the last uh, few minutes, but uh, I think you've got. Now uh, I gotta wait for the video because I don't have any. Don't have any yeah, yeah, no, that's the way it works. And I think, uh, I think you have um, a model that is, is super high value. And over time, I think you know, and I know the price is definitely going to go up because when I think of uh, uh, comparable solutions that get uh, people from no income to more structured income to uh, best practices to training around a profession, uh, they charge a lot more than what your current investment thing is. Yeah. Um, and you're adding a ton more value. And then, so that's just like- and That's how we're coming in on the, on the CrossFit model again, because I think, they, I think they started out at 500 bucks a year. Yeah. And now they're 3,000 a year, Yeah. If, if, I'm, if I'm right. And then they make a lot of their revenue off the training. Most right? of their revenue is training. And um, yeah, the affiliates, the thing is, is they literally give you zero support. That's, that's why the 3,000 can work, yeah. is because they, what they've done is, and arguably, and this is, you know, I could, it would be a longer discussion around they've designed a new vehicle. And this is what's unique about that model. And this is true for any business, honestly, and, and I'll, I'll just leave this as a cliffhanger. Um, it's the P90X muscle confusion. Right, right. And that's what, and, 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 and people that get it will get it, but at the end of the day, your customer's here, they wanna get up the mountain, they're gonna choose a vehicle to get in. They've tried things in the past. At some point, they're gonna hear this thing, uh, uh, butter fed, blah, 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 coffee. Well, you know what I mean? Like there's these new vehicles that they either say, yes, I resonate with that, I'm gonna try it. And it's unique enough that the market and they get results that the market then takes care of it itself. So that's why you see things like the ketogenic diet today, uh, P90X back in the day, um, you know, just X, Y, and Z. But, and that's, that was what made CrossFit CrossFit, I think that people don't understand. And definitely the economic model where they left so much value for other people to exploit that people couldn't help but promote it because it was in their best interest. So they deferred their marketing spend to their suppliers because their suppliers, they created such a great mousetrap that it was in their supplier's best interest, AKA Rogue, right. AKA you name the supplement company. Like CrossFit said, we're not gonna do the nanos, like all these different products, yet you know, Reebok comes along and, and writes a big check to CrossFit every year. So like it's, it's gonna go down in a very unique business model that I don't think a lot of people could pull off because they didn't have the vehicle, which was the version of Cross, like, it's hard, it would take a long time to explain, but that's like, it has to be that different and get results that people go, I've not tried that before and I'm willing to give it a try and, and really the tip of the spear, like a very focused, hardcore customer segment in a market that is, becomes the disciples that can't shut the fuck up about it. I mean, that's CrossFit yeah, at its yeah, best, totally. right? Like, how do you know somebody does CrossFit? They don't shut the fuck up about it. Anyways, uh, super fun conversation, Mike. Appreciate it. Awesome. Came here today, try and get, I, I've been, this this side hustle thing, you know, part of our main business that uh, that I was talking about has been been a colossal amount of work to get it out of the gate. And then, in, probably about four months ago, I just kind of burnt out on it because it was just so much work. And uh, and now I'm now I'm re rediscovering a little bit of energy to to get really get back into it and um, trying to take everything that we've learned over the last year and, and make it into a, a workable model and. Uh, and uh, just came here to, you know, this this software kind of thing is is totally new to me, and so I know Dan's Dan's the man when it comes to that. So uh, just came here to bounce bounce some challenges off him and get some clarity, and and I got that for sure. If somebody wanted to come to Dan for advice, maybe one word of warning is uh, bring a notebook and be prepared to write fast, because he's gonna he's gonna dump a fire hose of knowledge at you, and most of it most of it is pretty good, but you got to be prepared to figure out how to synthesize all that stuff. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've actually chatted with Dan a few times uh, on this very thing, and every time I come away with 
uh, you know, at least two or three things that, that, I, that I'm going to implement and that I have implemented in the past right away and it's, uh, it's generally spot on and the guy knows what he's talking about and uh, so, you know, come prepared with the right questions, I guess. Dan likes to work in short little bursts and so there's not a lot of time in there to, you know, to cover, to cover everything in life. So uh, come, come prepared knowing what you want to get out of it and have the right, have the right questions.